Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about coordinate proofs. It's a type of proof, but it's a little bit different from our traditional proof. We're going to actually be plotting points and then using the distance formula to prove if a shape is parallelogram. We do need to remember the distance formula. So I've kind of noted it up here. The, the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if you need some more review or if you, it's been a while since you've done the distance formula, you might want to stop and actually review my video that's just straight up on the distance formula. But if you remember that or it's pretty familiar to you, then um, you're ready to go ahead and dive right in with coordinate proofs. So in this example, they've said the coordinates of quadrilateral CATS or CATS are, and then they give us the different coordinate points for each letter, and they want us to prove that cats is a parallelogram. Let's go ahead and just start by plotting these points on a graph and just looking at them. We've got C, which falls at negative 1, 1. We've got A that falls at 2, 1. We've got T that falls at 1, negative 1. And we've got S that falls at negative 2, 1. Or sorry, negative 2, negative 1. And then go ahead and connect your points. Okay, so now that we have those plotted, I could say that CATS definitely looks like a parallelogram, right? But they're asking us to prove it, like, like show the math behind this proving that it is a parallelogram. So just saying, yeah, it looks like a parallelogram. It's not good enough, okay? So we have to actually prove it. You might want to review my video on properties of parallelograms if you're not familiar with that. And I'll, I'll link that video above uh, for you guys to check that out if, you need, if you're unfamiliar with parallelogram properties. But there are a number of ways, and in that video I tackle six different ways to prove a parallelogram. And this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, then I can say with certainty, this is a parallelogram. That's what I'm going to do in this particular example. Looking at that, notice how these two sides, so CA and TS, they fall directly on like a straight line of my coordinate um, plane, right? So I can actually just count the boxes here. And you can totally do that. We don't need to use the distance formula. You could, you'd get the same answer but it'd be a waste of time, right? Because you can just count it. So I can count that from C to A is one, two, three units. So I'm just gonna note that on here. And then from T to S is one, two, three units. So again, I'll just note that on here. So I can say that these two sides are congruent to each other. Now I'm actually going to write it over here because again I want to prove it. I want to show my steps proving this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to go ahead and note what we just said. Okay. So, so far, so good, right? Those sides are congruent to each other. Now, I know the temptation is to go, okay, well, let me just count on the other sides, right? Let me just count C, S, and oh, um, it's slanted, but whatever, it kind of looks like two units, right? Like it covers two boxes, so we'll just call it two. No, unfortunately, we can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Okay, we can only count if it falls directly along a straight line like it did here and here. So. For our last two sides, for this side and this side, because it's diagonal lines, we're going to have to use distance formula. We want to find the distance. Let's just start with, with uh, AT. AT, the two points were, um, A was, let me just note them down here. A was 2, 1, right? And T was 1, negative 1. So now, in order for us to use distance formula, to actually find the distance, we need to label what is my x1, x2, and what's my y1, y2. I'm going to make point A my x1, y1. 
So I'm going to call my 2, my x1, and my 1, my y1. And I'm going to call for point t, I'm going to call that my x2, y2. So let's actually, now that I've got my x1, y1, x2, y2 together, oh, just did another equal sign. Let's go ahead and plug it into the formula up here. So I know I've got the square root of x2, which we're calling 1, minus x1, which is 2, and that squared, plus y2, which is negative 1, minus y1, which is positive 1, squared. And notice the whole thing is underneath that radical. This is where you're going to want to bring in your calculator to kind of speed up some time. Could we do that by hand? Absolutely, but let's save some time, right? So let's do square root of parenthesis 1 minus 2 squared plus negative 1 minus 1 squared. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. Again, make sure if you're plugging this in on yours that your radical is going all the way to the end. Very important. And let's hit enter. Okay, so we've got a really long decimal. We're going to round that. We're going to say 2.2, let's just round it to the nearest hundredths and say 2.24. And we'll put that away. So now that we've got our distance of AT, we're going to go ahead and note it on here. It's 2.24. Let's find our distance of SC. Okay, so let's note what point S and point C were. So point S was negative 2, negative 1, right? And point C was negative 1, 1. So let's go ahead and bring out our blue color to label. Um, since this was my first point, I'm just going to call it X1 y1 and x2 y2 for my second point. You could totally do it the opposite way and make this your second point and that your first point. It does not matter as long as you're consistent, okay? Meaning your sub number one needs to be together and your sub number two needs to be together. Other than that, you can totally flip flop and get the same answer. So let's go ahead and plug it into the formula. So remember it's x2 negative 1 minus x1. Now notice we got a double negative here because that's I already have a negative which is from the formula but then I have a negative number here. So remember two negatives actually make a positive, right? So a negative negative 2 is really the same thing as just positive 2. So I always like to go ahead and skip that step and just kind of go ahead and make that a plus. That's just me. If you need to write out negative, negative 2 to see that, by all means, go ahead. And then we square it, and we add our y2 minus, and again, we've got that situation again, minus y1, minus a negative 1, which is really just plus 1. So let's bring out the calculator again to kind of save some time. Notice I've left this here because even though I did round that, I just want to make sure I truly get the same distance because if this is a parallelogram, it should be exactly the same. So I'm going to do square root of, let's do negative 1 plus 2 squared plus 1 plus 1 squared and hit enter. Okay, look. Notice I got the exact same, okay? So again, I'm just going to go ahead and round to the nearest tundra, so I'm not going to write that entire decimal out. We're just going to say 2.24. Okay, so we now know that side SC is really 2.24. Let's think about, we kind of got lost in the distance formula there for a second, but let's really think about, again, what our goal is. We're trying to prove that CATS is a parallelogram. And in order to be a parallelogram according to our parallelogram properties, we have to have the same distance on the opposite sides, right? So because we now know this side is congruent to this side, we can now say CATS is truly a parallelogram. And we want to do that in a statement. So I'm going to show you how I, I like to write my statement. Since opposite sides are congruent, 
we can say with certainty that CATS is a parallelogram. Okay, and as long as you've got that statement, that final statement, that's always good to just show your teacher or your instructor or your professor that you know what you've proved. Since opposite sides are congruent, CATS, CATS, is a parallelogram. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answer of is it a parallelogram and also your proving statement in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.